you this morning. Amen. If you are able, you got your windows down, just stick a hand out in the air and let's give the Lord praise this morning and thank him. Amen. That we are able to gather together in this parking lot this morning to give the Lord praise today. Why don't we just take a moment together as a church family and let's just love him today. God, we magnify you. We've come this morning to give you praise. Thank you, God, for allowing us to gather together in this place today. We pray that your spirit would move through this place today. God, that you would touch every vehicle and every family that's in this house this morning. God, we are turning this into the house of the Lord today. We thank you because you've been good to us. 
Thank you for your hand of protection in our life, for watching over us, God, and our families today. God, we magnify you this morning. We give you praise today. If you can, why don't you shout amen this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you today. Amen. Our ushers are going to come this morning, and uh, they are going to receive an offering today. Amen. Thank you to everybody that has been faithful in giving to the work of the Lord. Amen. We appreciate it very, very much, and we want to say thank you for your continued support. Amen. And uh, we pray that you have been blessed by our live stream services. We've been working very hard to make that the very best experience possible as we continue to go through this season. And uh, we pray that it is not very much longer, but we're going to continue, amen, to bring live stream in our midweek services. And if the weather holds up, we'll be back right here next Sunday morning for another drive-in service. And then this week, we are working uh, on a plan for the month of June. And as soon as that is together, we will make sure that you are aware of that and we'll be contacting you as we begin to open up and, and begin to have folks come back into the house of the Lord in the month of June. And so please just bear with us a little while longer and uh, just ask the Lord to help us, give us wisdom, amen, as we continue to go forward in Jesus' name. We do want to take some prayer needs to the Lord this morning. We want to pray for Brother Octavio today that the Lord would touch him and bless him. Amen. That the Lord would give him strength right now and heal his body. We also want to pray for a young lady by the name of Annalie Rojo. That the Lord would touch her today and help her this morning. Amen. We want to pray for Sister Rhonda this morning. I saw that she was watching on the live stream. We want her to know that we are praying for her today and for strength. If you have an unspoken request this morning, would you just stretch your hand out the window today and let's begin to pray. If you know somebody right now that needs a touch from the Lord, let's pray and believe right now that God will touch them and heal them and strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Let's do that together today. Lift your voice right now in the name of Jesus. God, we come before you today because you are a prayer answering God. We thank you today, God, to, for your hand of protection in our life, uh, in the Mount Zion family and friends. God, we ask you, Lord, to continue to touch and have your way today, to bless those today that need healing in their body, to touch Sister Rhonda today. God, that you would bless her right now and bring healing to her today. For Anna Lee, God, you have the answer. God, speak it right now and bring healing and touch her family and give her strength today. For Brother Octavio right now, bless him and touch his body today and bring healing. For every unspoken request today, God, for the community of Goshen, we pray today that you would bring healing to this land and strength and revival in the name of Jesus. And everybody, would you shout amen this morning? Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise today as they continue to lead us in worship this morning. Praise the Lord, church. I know it's a little awkward, but I wonder if we could all just put our hands together because our God is alive and well this morning. The Lamb that was slain, He's alive. Forever He shall He's alive. They crucified a Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hand, he's alive. 
this morning, I pray that you would surround us with your presence, God. Lord, that you would help us to fight our battles with our worship, Jesus. you've prepared for me in the presence of my enemies it's your body and the blood you shed for me this is how I find my battles there's a table that you've prepared for me in the presence in the presence of my enemies, it's your body and the blood you shed for me. This is how I find my Surround. 
my church what this verse means is it may look like you're surrounded on all sides by the enemy by trials by tribulations it may look like you're surrounded and you may be but more importantly you're also surrounded by the love of God and he is fighting our battles and thank you Jesus because I couldn't do it on my own I couldn't do a quarter of the things anything nothing I couldn't do anything on my own and so this morning if you are glad that even though you may be surrounded by the things of this world you're not surrounded alone because you're also surrounded by the love of God by his saving power by his saving grace it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you this is how I find my together today and worship the Lord and magnify his name the Bible says that the Lord encampeth his angels about amen those that fear him amen we are surrounded by his mercy this morning we are surrounded by his grace this morning amen there's angels that are encamped about this place this today amen around your home today would you lift your voice together with us and magnify the Lord and worship him Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, we want to say welcome to everyone that, that came this morning. We want to, all those that are watching online, we want to welcome you as well in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, the book of Acts, chapter number 3. Verse number 16, in Jesus' name this morning. How many feel the presence of the Lord in this house this morning, in this place of worship this morning? Amen. He is here in this place. Amen. He's here in this, this tabernacle that we've set up to worship him. Acts chapter 3, verse number 10. The Bible says, And they knew that it was he, which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, you men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Why look you so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and, I, and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. 
and kill the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I want to preach this morning with the help of the Holy Ghost on this thought. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. Amen. Would you lift your hands together with me? And would you cry to the Lord today and ask the Lord to minister in this place this morning? God, we come before you right now, Jesus, knowing that you are in this place already, Lord. God, you've anointed this sanctuary today. Your word is already anointed this morning. I pray, God, that, Lord, you would strengthen every believer today, that your word would go forth unhindered, that your word would go forth, Jesus, that there would be liberty in the spirit to move and minister this morning, we pray. I pray, God, that you would speak to the hearts and lives of every believer in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Someone give the Lord a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. God had just, Jesus had just performed a mighty miracle through the, through the apostles Peter and John and th uh, this man that lay by the gate called Beautiful. His man was born from his mother's womb, lame. But the Bible tells us in the earlier verses of that chapter where Peter and John were walking towards the temple. Amen. And this man looked upon them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter and John, Peter looked at him and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. The Bible records that this man leaped up and began to praise the Lord and went, amen, to give thanks unto the Lord for what he had done. The people that were in that day saw what had happened. They, they began to realize that this was the same man they passed by on the way to the temple. And now this same man is, is standing before them and leaping and praising God in the presence, amen, of the people. And the Bible tells us that the people were filled with wonder and amazement at the event that had just happened. They were filled with awe in the fact that they had witnessed a man that was lame, that they walked by, but somehow, some way, Jesus rose this man up. And Peter didn't waste no time. Peter did not waste, amen, this opportunity. Peter did not sit there and allow the crowd, because the Bible says this crowd began to gather around them in awe and amazement of what God had just done. And we find that Peter took this opportunity to preach one of the greatest apostolic messages you'll ever read in the book of Acts. And it's a model for apostolic preachers today to model after what the gospel of Jesus Christ, how it should be preached. And we find in the word of the Lord that Peter stood with boldness in front of that crowd and lifted his voice and lifted his, amen, in the presence of those people and told them, he said, I've come to tell you, don't look at us as we are the ones that healed this man. Don't look upon us as we are the ones that raised this man up. But the Christ Jesus, who is now resurrected, is the same power that can raise him up today. Can raise the church of the living God up in Jesus' name. Let me remind the church something today. When opportunity knocks, when there's a door of opportunity that arises, we ought to stand to the occasion with apostolic boldness and apostolic authority and declare the word of God. Declare that God is still a miracle worker. Declare that God is still a healer. He 
told them. He told them, he said, you denied the Holy One and the, and the just and desired a murder to be granted unto you. You killed the Prince of Life. He said, but I got some bad news from you. He said, you killed the Prince of Life, but God raised him from the dead. Whereof we are now witnesses. He said, it's not by our own power that this man was raised up, but it was by the power of the living God, of the God that is living and steadfast forever. Huh. You know what he preached? He preached to them a simple message of who Jesus is. Let me tell you something. You can't go wrong with telling people who Jesus is. You can't go wrong when you start to declare the name of Jesus. You can't go off track if you utter the name of Jesus. His name is powerful. Let me tell you who Jesus is not. Jesus is not an idol made of silver or gold. Jesus is not made by the work of man's hands. Jesus is not like the gods of this world that have mouths but cannot speak. Jesus is not like the gods of this world that have ears but cannot hear. Jesus is not like the gods of this world that have feet that cannot walk. Jesus is not like the God of this world that have hands that can't be handled. Let me remind you, Jesus Christ, he is still not on a cross. He is not dead in a tomb. He is not He's not dead and, and passed away, but the God that we serve, he is a resurrected God. He is a resurrected Savior. He is alive. Let me remind you about Jesus. He's a living God and steadfast forever. He is matchless. He's incomparable. His power is mighty. He's still a miracle worker. God is real. Let the whole world know Jesus is alive. Let the whole world know that Jesus is real. Come on, church, uh, we have the greatest door open uh, where we can openly declare that Jesus is real. Jesus is powerful. You're the most so. Huh? You're the most so. Come here, how I want to remind you today, church. Uh, that Jesus uh, is still on the throne, that Jesus is still uh, present today, uh, helping the people of God, uh, reaching to them in Jesus' name. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven, uh, given among men, uh, whereby we must uh, be saved. There's no other saving name uh, but the name of Jesus. Uh, there's no other name uh, that can raise you up uh, than the name of Jesus. There's no other name uh, that can heal your body but the name of Jesus. There's no other name that can transform your life, heal your marriage, tear up the things of the world in the name of Jesus. I've come to learn that we better never take for granted that name. I've come to learn that I don't want to just haphazardly use that name. There's authority in that name. There's power 
in that name. Miracles transpire in that name. Healings take place in the name. Somebody shout the name. Huh? He preached who Jesus is. But he did not stop there. Because he declared to that crowd that gathered around him, he declared to those onlookers that had witnessed a miracle. Peter said, I'm not going to let this opportunity pass me by. I'm not going to let this opportunity slip past by me, but I'm going to take this. Ad- I'm going to take advantage uh, of this situation uh, where crowds have gathered. Uh, crowds have gathered to look on and to see what God has done. He said, "I'm not just going to preach the name of Jesus, of who He is, but He said, I'm going to preach uh, what He can do." It's one thing uh, to know the name. It's another thing to know the power behind the name. It's one thing uh, to profess the name. It's another thing to know that when you call upon the name of Jesus, uh, all devils tremble. Fear has to leave. Demons have to go at the mention of the name. We are a people of the name. We are blood pot. We are resurrected, but born again apostolic believers. Been water baptized in the name. Our sins are buried in the name of Jesus. Why? Because there's power in the name. He said, he told that crowd, he said, you're here to look upon us. He said, but... Let me remind you, he said in verse number 10 through 12, he said, in his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. He said, it's faith in the name of Jesus that made this, that made the the, the ankle bones to come to life. It's faith in the name of Jesus uh, that caused those muscles uh, to auto- automatically come back and form together. Every sinew, uh, every piece of tissue, uh, amen, was all of a sudden resurrected uh, through the faith uh, that was in the name uh, of Jesus. He said, it's the faith which is by him, by that name hath given him the perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That name will make you completely whole. That name will completely make you whole. You didn't hear me. God doesn't heal halfway. Miracles are not performed halfway. But when God does something, he does it completely. He does it utterly. He does it to to make you whole. Put your faith in that name. Let the whole world know there is a name. Huh? Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think, according to the power that worketh in us. That name will cause things to happen. That name will cause things to come to pass. That that name, when you speak it, gives the power and the ability to raise the dead to life, to make the blind to see, to heal cancer, to raise the dead. God is able. He said, I want you to understand. I want you to understand. He said, the God that did this, it's because of that name 
And it's because that you put faith in that name. That when we spoke that name, that's what caused that man to rise up and walk. That's the reason that he stands before you whole. That's the reason why that he stands before you healed. He is the way maker. He is the peace in the midst of your storm. He is your shield and your defender. He is your provider and your sustainer. He is the hope for your tomorrow. His name is above every name. His name is Jesus. Whether you like it or not, we are the people of the name. When you went down to the waters of baptism, you took on the name of Jesus. And because you took on the power of the name of Jesus, you have the right, you have the authority to declare to your adversary and say, in the name of I felt this in my spirit this morning. I had a total different message. And the Lord began to deal with me and began to confirm his word. And he said, I want to let your people know. I want you to declare. I want them to let the whole world know who I am and what I can do. If people will get a revelation of who Jesus is. If you would get a revelation of what he can do, if you would get a revelation of, of how he can deliver and save and bring you out, there's no other name. Huh. And he told them the last thing. As our musicians come, he said, I'm going to tell them who Jesus is. And I'm going to tell them how he could change their life and what he's able to do. But the third thing he told them in that passage of scripture, he preached to them what they needed to do to change. Any apostolic message ought to leave room for people to come to an altar to make a change. Every apostolic message ought to end with an opportunity for people to gather together and lift their hands and let the word penetrate the hearts and let the word get down deep in the soul and let God begin to enact change in your heart because that's exactly what the gospel message does. It'll change you. It'll transform you. It'll repair your marriage. It'll repair the brokenness of your heart. There's power when God begins to change. He preached this message. He told the people who I am. He told the people this is what he can do. And he told the people this is what you need to do to change. And he declared it to them in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. And he declared these words. Repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. He said, I've told you who he was. I've told you what he can do. But now is the opportunity for this group that gathered around Peter. He said, I want you to understand something. You were the ones that gave up our just Jesus. You were the ones that sent him to a cross to be murdered. But I want to give you an opportunity to change. I want to give you an opportunity to make things right. I want to give you an opportunity to get back in the right relationship with God. He told him, he said, I want you to understand something. 
the way that you can conduct change in your life. It always works. It'll never fail. It's when you come to an altar of repentance, when you fall on your face before God and cry out and ask God for forgiveness. There's something that happens in the spirit. There's something that happens in the atmosphere when the people cry out for change. One of the first steps of change is people need to repent of their sins and ask God to forgive them. And God is just and willing to forgive you. Would you lift your hands right now? Yo, no, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Would you lift your hands? Come on, God is trying to help us uh, that we would declare that we will let the whole world know uh, who he is, uh, that we will let the whole world know uh, what he can do, uh, that he will let the whole world know uh, that he's able to help them, uh, that you will let the whole world know uh, Jesus loves you. You know what's interesting about this miracle? This miracle did not take place in a church house. This miracle that transpired did not happen between the four walls of a church place where they were gathered together. The Bible says that they were on their way to the temple. It happened uh, in the streets uh, on their way uh, to the temple. That ought to encourage you today uh, that miracles uh, don't have to be just reserved uh, to that building right here or this building right here. Miracles uh, are not just, this is not the only place uh, where miracles and healings can take place. But miracles uh, can happen uh, when you're conducting a Facebook Live. <laughs> miracles uh, can happen uh, while you're doing a Zoom meeting. Uh, miracles uh, can happen uh, anywhere. <laughs> you know the last point I want to make? Uh, miracles do not take place in the building. <laughs> They took place in the church on a city street. And the message that was preached was not preached in the four walls of a church. The Bible says that Peter stood on the porch of Solomon. Much like the porch we're on here today. Hear me today, church. The porch without shade. But hear me today. Peter stood on the porch of Solomon's colonnade and openly declared who he was. Boldly declared what he could do and told them through the power of the Holy Ghost, this is what you need to do to change. Mount Zion, we have no control over what's going on the outside around us. We cannot control this pandemic. We cannot control this virus that seems to be penetrating every home. And we read about in the news. But let me remind you what we can't control. We can still have church. We can still declare the name of Jesus and let Goshen know. Every apartment under the sound of my voice, every house that surrounds Mount Zion, hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear that Jesus loves you. Hear ye that Jesus can save you. Hear ye that Jesus can deliver you. Lift your hands all across this place. Hallelujah. 
Come on, they gotta hear. The world needs to hear. This world needs to hear. This world needs to hear. There's a God that loves them. Our platform did not shrink. where the prophet Isaiah said we just enlarged our tent we're stretching forth the tent posts we're enlarging the place of our habitation we're reaching not just hundreds we're reaching thousands of people are hearing this message of the gospel saving name not just 10 or 20, but thousands are listening in to the name of Jesus because we've enlarged. Lift your hands right now. Call upon that name. Would you call upon that name? Come on. I know it's getting warm today, but in the next few minutes, would you call upon that name? He has the power to heal. He has the power to deliver. He has the power to save. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's worship the Lord as they come back to lead us in worship one more time. Jesus, He is our healer. Call the name of Jesus, He is our reminder. Call the name of Jesus, He is our deliverer. Call the name of Jesus, He is our deliverer.
Lord, everybody, I hope everybody had a good time this morning. It is. That is God. God is great, and his word is great. I got a text from my sister. She told me not to say anything, but that's all right. I'm going to say it anyway because God deserves all the glory and everything. And I believe that any time we want a healing, that we keep it to ourselves we don't do any, any good. We got to share what God does in our body, what he does for us, and we have to move forward with it. I showed Pastor this message my sister sent me. My sister has been in a lot of pain, been in bed. She hasn't been able to get up. She's been taking pain pills. But listening to Brother Anthony's this message, that pain has gone away. She is able to get up. She's able to do everything. That is the God that we serve. That is the God that we loves us, that he'll, no matter what, He'll heal you wherever you're at if you believe and trust in him. That is the mighty God we have. God bless you all. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. What a wonderful testimony that we had this morning. Looking forward to have more testimonies of what God is going to do. We've got to expand our borders. We've got to reach beyond our walls. Amen. Let our faith grow with us and grow in God. Amen. We have a potential and an opportunity, amen, to reach the lost like never before. Somebody say amen. Honk your horns for the Lord today. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited about what God is doing. Yes. Is there an amen? Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We got to get excited about what Jesus is doing in our life. Amen. We've got to tell somebody about the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Love you all. God bless you. Appreciate you very much. Amen. Tell everybody as you're driving by, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Be safe, everybody. Don't worry. Don't forget about our uh, Facebook Live on Thursday night. Amen. Sunday, next Sunday, drive up service. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget to give your tithing offering. Amen. Love you all. Amen. And, and honk your horn for Brother David Villanueva. Amen. God bless you.
same. 